Hello. I just thought I'd do a uh, update on my uh, Heathkit EA2 and my G monitoring speaker. Uh, you might be able to hear, uh, but there's some a uh, little bit of crackling still. Uh, I got all the capacitors replaced with the exception of the main uh, filter cap and the big can. Uh, the problem is the caps I bought to replace the multi-cap can with are too big to restuff inside the can. Um, so I got to either get smaller caps or figure out a way to try to hide them under the chassis, which there's really not much room. Um, but aside from that, the first hour, hour and a half, I don't get any crackling. Um, the crackling is very minor. So I've got, you know, 90% of the problem solved. Um, something else I did was replace the uh, 470k ohm resistor to the tuner with a 100k resistor, and that uh, gives the volume control a lot more gain, meaning I've got higher volume at a lower setting and a higher overall volume uh, compared to what I had, which honestly it's a little overkill what I have now, so I'm probably going to put another 100k resistor in there. Uh, to even it up to 200k, which is still a lot less than the original 470, but I think that'll be a, a happy medium. Um, as you can see, it's already on. It's lights on. Let me bring up the volume a little. So that's only up just a little ways. All the way base, no base, all base, no treble, all treble. I like it. But I like that. Turn that down so I don't get any uh, copyright problems. Um, but as you can see, the speaker looks the same. Uh, I have cleaned it up with some furniture polish, and the wood was very, very dry, so I had to rub quite a bit into it. Uh, I took a stain pen, fixed a few of the scratches. Uh, there's some uh, right up here. I think you can kind of see them. And the stain pen, it, it, it muted them. I'm not trying to hide it. I mean, it's 60-some-odd years old. It's earned every single one of those scratches. Um... But, you know, just kind of hide them a little bit, mute them. It's okay. I don't want to completely strip it and restore it. It's fine as is. Um, especially the bottom down here on this side. It was scratched up really bad. And uh, it looks a lot better. Uh, the side used to look a lot like the bottom does now. And I haven't done anything to the bottom yet. I'm debating on just leaving it as is. Um, the other thing I've got right now... As you can see here, uh, let me move the laptop out of the way. There we go, sorry about that. Um, it's a turntable. It is a Fisher MT32, which I know once upon a time Fisher made really nice stuff. This particular turntable feels really, really cheap. Uh, the reason I got it, I've been hitting up pawn shops and junk stores to find a good one for a while. And I went into a pawn shop today and said, hey, got any turntables? Because I was like, well, no. I'm like, well, what about those two on the floor covered in dust? Oh, they don't work. Well, gonna look at them anyway. Okay. So I looked at them, and this one looked salvageable. The guy plugged it in. It didn't spin. Uh, the arm just kind of wobbled. Uh, so I'm like, well, maybe I can fix it. So I paid all the $5 for it. And uh, the turntable didn't spin because the rubber, uh, the belt had come off, so it's belt drive. And the arm was wobbly because one of the little plastic uh, joints underneath, it's all plastic and sheet metal. It's, like I said, cheaply made. Uh, had cracked, and it, it was a, a brace against a metal pin, and the pin was just spinning freely where that plastic was supposed to be holding tight. So I, I glued it down with some super glue, and everything seems to work. The last thing I'm waiting on is a uh, is a new cartridge. 
Apparently the reason the pawn shop guy put this aside in the first place is somebody tried stealing the cartridge and they broke it instead. And they messed everything else up at the same time. Um, but, you know, all the other little problems are pretty minor. And I found a, car a cartridge online, a uh, Audio-Technica. Uh, normal retail is about 40 bucks. I found one on clothes on Amazon for about 16 so I figured that was probably a good deal, and I grabbed it. Um, but it's got RCA outs. It's a magnetic phonograph, which, conveniently, mag phono in. Ooh. So, uh, once I get the, uh, the cartridge in, I'm going to try it, make sure everything works. And after that, I'm going to start hunting for a some kind of a cabinet to put the uh, turntable, and I'm going to try to find some kind of a short bookshelf-ish looking thing and add a drawer on rollers, or at least a shelf, and put the uh, turntable on the shelf, you know, about this level, so I can just pull out the turntable, put my record on it, turn it on, push it back, and then have the records underneath, and then on top, I don't want to put the turntable on top because I don't want to get it covered in dust because I don't have a dust cover for it. Uh, but on top, after I get it recapped, I'm putting my other Zenith table radio on it. And then I'll have a whole uh, uh, antique vintage audio setup, I suppose. Um, which at that point, it should be kind of nice. It could be fun. Uh, not like I'm a real audiophile or anything, but, you know, just the ability to run music off my phone or run some records, you know, some classical or some old hair metal or something just for fun. Um, oh, it's, it's kind of fun, and, you know, like I said, it, well, I haven't said it yet, but everything so far I have has been dirt cheap. I mean, the, I'll have 25 bucks or so in the record player. I have a dollar or two in wiring for the speaker, and I've got about, uh, not counting the caps for the uh, look at it can. I've got about 20, 25 in recapping the amplifier. And, you know, for less than 100 bucks, you know, I, I could probably find a, a, an old, beat up looking shelf of some kind I can refurbish or refinish for pretty cheap. And, you know, records, I can pick those up at the uh, Salvation Army, you know, 50 cents, dollar a piece, even $5 a piece if it's a good one or whatever. You know, it's cheap. I mean, I'd have a whole shebang for 100 bucks or so. You know, maybe less, maybe a little more. But, you know, the point is, well, I guess the Zenith Radio is probably going to be another 30 or 40 to recap it. But, you know, in any case, still really cheap to get this done. And uh, it's fun. It looks nice. Uh, it's a little big, a little bulky. And I think I'm going to move it in my house at some point. Uh, over to that corner where that bookshelf is, but um, it's not set in stone. I may stick it, I don't know, in this corner or where my other Philco is or my bedroom. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but the problem with it being on this end of the house is, I mean, the sound carries really well throughout the house. It's just the sound is centralized by the front door where nobody ever is unless they're coming or going. Um, so I'm thinking about putting it over in the center of the house where that other bookshelf is so that the sound would, uh, be a little more even. So, but anyway, um, just thought I would update on what's going on with that. And, uh, once I get this lovely turntable running or not, I mean, it's very possible it's completely fried. Although it's very simple, I'm pretty sure I fixed it, but, you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll update again once I get that figured out. Probably, gosh, a couple weeks by the time I get the part in. Their shipping said they'd be slow. Um, yeah, not like I'm in a huge hurry or anything. So, anyway, I uh, just thought I would share.